Welcome back. We are doing another 2024 High Limit Racing season preview. Today we're talking about Rico Abreu, quite possibly the biggest pickup that High Limit has gotten so far. And I think he will be, uh, when it's all said and done, he will be the biggest pickup that this series has uh, in 2024. Being able to get him from that pick and choose schedule to go full-time racing with this series is an absolutely huge deal. A monumental deal, if I might add. I mean, he is a huge crowd favorite. Top three, probably, with the fans in the entire country. So to get Rico Abreu full-time with High Limit, it is certainly a big deal. Rico Abreu, 30 years old at the time of this recording, driving the Abreu Kerbagajanian Racing number 24. The car is crew chiefed by Rick Warner. Now, let's jump right into it. So I've got on the board here his stats from the last five years with just the World of Outlaws. I would not have enough room on this board if I put all of the all-star stuff on there as well. I do have a couple of all-star things in the board, um, but I'm not going to put every breakdown of every single season from that series. So we'll start out in 2019 with the World of Outlaws. Rico Abreu ran 24 or 27 races, made 24 A main events. He had zero wins, three top fives, 12 top tens, zero laps led, and 11.6 average finish. And then another column over here that I have added to just Rico's is he did have six 410 wins uh, in 2019, most of those coming in California with King of the West. Now, 2020 COVID year, Rico only has 15 appearances with the Outlaws, made 13 A mains that year. Once again, zero wins, four top fives, seven top tens, zero laps led, an 11.7 average finish. And once again, he had six 410 wins across the country. He had two of them with the All-Star Circuit of Champions that year. But as you can see uh, right there, two goose eggs right off the bat there in the win column. He does gain one top five and loses five top tens, but he did have a lot less races in 2020. 2021 comes around. He runs 25 races with the Outlaws and makes the show 20 times. Another goose egg in the win column with zero. Two top fives this time, nine top tens, zero laps led, and his average finish slips back a little bit again with 12.1 and only two wins in the 410 all season long in 2021. At this point in time, you know, I don't think Rico Abreu was very, very confident in his uh, in his driving, right? Or not very confident in the team or the situation that he was in. And if you look at these numbers, uh, for some of you, it might be kind of like, wow, I, I never knew that he went that long without a win. And speaking of that, I have this road off to the side here. In 2018, he did get his last World of Outlaws win at Silver Dollar Speedway. It was a 105 race win drought between 2018 in 2022 before he was able to win another World of Outlaws race. And something that correlates with that is Rick Warner joining the team in 2022. And so with that being said, we'll read this line now. So 2022, Rico runs 39 races with the Outlaws, makes all of them but one, so 38 A mains. Finally gets a win off the on the board with the Outlaws after such a long time. Eight top fives, 19 top tens, 36 laps led and improves his average uh, finish by almost three positions in total. And he also had six other 410 wins across the country. Sorry, yep, six 410 wins across the country. Yes, and he had one with the All-Stars. 2023 comes around, and this is the biggest year of Rico's career by far. 2023, he has 46 appearances with the World of Outlaws, 45 A-Main starts, six wins, 21 top fives, 37 top tens, 252 laps led, and an average finish of 6.5 and 13 410 wins across the country, including two more with the All-Star Circuit of Champions. So an absolutely monumental year. And at some points throughout the year, I remember saying it, uh, that he was the best car in the country every time we rolled into the pit area. And you could tell the first race with the Outlaws at Lincoln, he dominated and he kind of set the tone for the rest of the year. Uh, for what was going to happen. Also have wrote on here his high limit season because he did run all 11 races with high limit last year for the midweek series. He made all 11 shows, four wins, nine top fives, 10 top tens, 152 laps led, and an average finish of 4.1 for second place in points behind Kyle Larson. So in all of the high limit races, he was in the top 10 except for one time and led a considerable amount, a considerable amount of laps for as little of races as there were last season. Now on the left side of the board for you guys watching, big wins in Rico's career. He's got a lot of them, but these are some of the ones that stuck out to me. He got that Eldora Million prelim win earlier this year, I guess in 2023. It is, I am recording this in 2024 now, if you haven't noticed that some of these have been pre-recorded. Uh, but 2023, 
He was able to win the Eldora Million Prelim. Summer Nationals win at Williams Grove Speedway. Race through Dean Foundation race. That was at Plymouth, Wisconsin. Four crown win at Eldora. That was in the wing car. Uh, three PA Speed Week wins. Two Ohio Sprint Week wins. In 2019, he swept the Trophy Cup at Tulare. I know that's a 360 race, but to win all three nights of the Trophy Cup, easily the biggest 360 race of the year. I figured I'd put that on the board. Two times an Ironman 55 winner and two times a Gold Cup Race of Champions winner. So Rico's won a lot of races, and I'm not even scratching the surface there with that um, column over there. Now, let's jump a little bit deeper into the stats of these five years with the World of Outlaws. In 2019, he had a plus 66 in feature plus minus, meaning he was passing more cars in the features all year round. A qualifying average of 14.2, and that might be why he was passing so many cars. He had to come from the middle of the pack to get to the front. Only five dash appearances and 11 uh, B made appearances. 11 B made appearances in 24 uh, attempts. You know, so that's kind of a lot. 2020 minus two on the plus minus, but that year, remember, he only had 13 A main event starts. 14.3 average or qualifying average that does slide down just slightly. Seven dash appearances, and that's supposed to be that's supposed to be a green number. That was my mistake there. He goes up from five uh, or goes up from five to seven, and then six uh, B made appearances in 2020. 2021 plus 23 in the plus minus department. 14.4 qualifying average. Man, those three years could not figure out qualifying. Was outside the top 10 average. Uh, for three straight years and almost into the top, or, you know, outside the top 15. Only two dash appearances in 2021 and back up to nine B-made appearances. 2021 was a rough year for sure for Rico. 2022, when Ricky Warner joins the team, plus 31 on the plus-minus department. And 7.8, it's incredible. The You can just see the change in the stats alone. It, his qualifying average cut directly in half uh, from 14.4 to 7.8. 13 dash appearances and down to four B main appearances. And now 2023, the best year of his career, plus 70 on the plus minus, 6.7 average qualifying effort. That gets down even another position. 25 dash appearances in 45 races and four B main uh, appearances in 2023 with the World of Outlaws. So, uh, man, you can just tell it's crazy to look that you, as soon as Ricky Warner joins the team, uh, everything goes green for Rico, and, and he really finds he finds his groove again. I mean, he finds his mojo after, you know, struggling for three or four years right there. And uh, it seemed like, I don't know, I, I, everybody was kind of worried, you know. Like, Rico was winning the Gold Cup. He was winning the Ironman. There was a couple of years where he was really, really good when the Outlaws came to town or when he came with the Outlaws. And then right here, um, it just, it was a rough stretch. But it's great to see him get back to where he is now and just be so successful. SprintCarRatings.com has Rico Abreu at, as the eighth best driver in the country over the last two years, and that includes 19 410 wins. The only two drivers running high limit full-time at this point in time are Brad Sweet and Brent Marks that are in front of him on that list. Sweet is seventh, and Marks is P1. So eighth overall, that's pretty good, but I think that should be a little bit better, to be completely honest. I think he should have been top three uh, on that list. Now, let's go over there to the strengths department, and the first on that line is just Rick Warner. Having, uh, you know, quite arguably the best crew chief in the modern era of sprint car racing in your back pocket is definitely a huge strength uh, for Rico and able to convince him to go full-time racing again. Uh, that's going to be huge uh, all season long to have that experience, uh, have that notebook, have that guy, you know, being able to, uh, you know, put your car or get your car in the right position uh, for any kind of racetrack that pops up. So that is huge. Uh, Rico, in the prime of his career right now, when the season starts, he will officially turn 31 years old. And so he's getting, you know, he's hitting the prime of his career. He's doing great things here. The, just last year, the best season of his life. And now he's going full-time high limit. And he's right there in that kind of age range where we like to see drivers, you know, I would say between 28 and, and like 38, you know, maybe 28 to 38 is kind of, I would say the prime of your career. And uh, he's certainly in, in a, a really good position right now to um, to capitalize on that. Now, uh, also final thing on that strengths department is his confidence is at an all-time high at this point in time. It seemed like every time we talked to him in an interview uh, last year, he was just, that was like one of the words he used the most was confidence. He knows when he gets on the racetrack, his car is going to be proper. Now, with this department, he has never raced for a championship that was more than 25 races long. He was the USAC Midget Champion in 2013. He did run two or three years there with USAC and the Midgets, but none of those seasons went even more than 23 races at a time. 
And so this is something that Rico's going to have to learn quickly if he wants to contend with Brad Sweet for this championship. He needs to not, you know, when he has a bad night or he gets into a wreck, he can't just pull off and call it quits. He's got to get back out on the racetrack if he does get a flat tire or, you know, knocks the front end out or, you know, if he's running 14th, he needs to do his best to try and turn that into an 11th place or a 10th place run. So that is something that's going to be really interesting to follow along with as we see Rico get into that mindset of going for points because this charter deal, man, it's going to be a huge deal. And obviously, uh, as you can see on my prediction, I think he, if he can figure that out, he will be a contender for this championship overall. So I've got him down for first or second in the point standings. He will be Brad Sweet's closest championship rival all season long. Those two will be battling night in and night out for the 60 race schedule with high limit. And I think he's going to get somewhere between eight and 10 wins. And honestly, that could be a little bit low, uh, especially after the uh, 13 win season he had last year, six with the Outlaws and four with high limit. So I'm going with eight to 10, uh, but I would not be surprised at all to see that maybe up in the 12 range uh, for Rico, especially going back to some racetracks that he is extremely good at. So uh, I know this one was probably highly anticipated. Uh, this is all we've got, though, for the Rico Abreu High Limit Racing Season Preview. Let me know what you think Rico is going to do. What are his numbers going to be uh, next season with High Limit? Also wanted to say I appreciate all the kind words and all the comments on the videos and things like that. I honestly did not think that it would be that people would be really into this that much with a guy writing on a whiteboard, but it seems that uh, everybody out there is enjoying it. So appreciate that, and we will see you guys tomorrow for another one.